Hello, my name is Vicky Nguyen. Today, I am presenting on foodborne diseases in developing countries. Here is the content for today's presentation. I will introduce a little bit about myself and then stay in overview to foodborne diseases. I will also talk about what rare prevalence causes and impacts of foodborne diseases. I will also mention the challenges for developing countries, the potential addresses, and the conclusion. A little about me. I am a Vietnamese Canadian student in Richmond, British Columbia, Canada. I am an incoming senior at McLean Secondary School. At school, I am involved in student council, where I am a secretary. I am also a member of my school's math club and a youth health ambassador of the Curry Center Society. I am also involved in the BC Youth Parliament. Some of my interests are biology, history, and politics. My future goal is to become a physician. The purpose of today's presentation is to enhance the understanding of foodborne diseases and their impacts worldwide, especially in developing countries. Foodborne diseases are caused by food contamination at any stage of food process, delivery and consumption as defined by the World Health Organization. This is a huge concern for global health, as there are 200 diseases and 31 foodborne agents resulting from foodborne diseases. One in 10 people worldwide are affected every year. Foodborne diseases are linked to socioeconomic conditions especially in developing countries. Their impacts in healthcare, economy, and society are important. In the US, one in six Americans suffer from foodborne diseases every year, and 3,000 people die of foodborne diseases, and 128,000 people are hospitalized. Around the world, 600 million of the world's population and 420,000 deaths result from foodborne diseases. Children below five years old accounts for 40% of the total cases and 125,000 deaths. Most food-related outbreaks occur in Asia and Africa, with 53% and 75% of cases being recorded every year, respectively. Foodborne diseases are caused by food contamination, which are sorted into three types, physical, chemical, and biological. Physical contamination is caused by foreign objects during food processing. Chemical contamination is caused by chemicals such as kitchen sanitizers and toxins entering food. Biological contamination is caused by microorganisms, such as bacteria and viruses, rodents and pests. There is also the lack of regulation, which can give rise to loopholes and unofficial food businesses, which are very difficult to governments to control. There is also the complex food processing trade for international transportation. For example, six countries in the IFTN trade with 70% with other countries. Climate change also causes foodborne diseases as higher temperature can cause higher infection rates. A one degree Celsius rise can increase five to 10% in cases of salmonellosis. Moreover, precipitation events such as rain can bring pathogens to different regions. This chart shows the top 10 causes of foodborne diseases in Southeast Asia. As you can see, most causes are caused by viruses and bacteria. The impacts of foodborne diseases are severe, physiologically, economically, environmentally, and societal. Physiological effects of foodborne diseases include diarrhea, acute poisoning, cancer, and death. There are also neurological impacts because bacteria can affect the well-being of the brain and mental health overall. Economically, foodborne diseases cause 110 billion US dollars for developing countries every year. These costs do not include losses of commodity sales and food waste. The environmental effects of foodborne diseases include food waste, which can cause a huge increase in methane, which can be 25 times more potent than CO2 in causing climate change. There are also residue toxins entering food and water sources. The societal effects of foodborne diseases can be poverty and productivity loss. There is also a reduction of mutual trust as people can put more blame on national governments when there are large scale food outbreaks. This pie chart shows that most people hospitalized with salmonella infections recover. However, the deaths make up most of the economic burden from this pathogen, which are $3.3 billion. However, there are still many challenges for developing countries to address. First, geographical factors such as increased air and water temperature during long summers can give rise to more bacteria propagating, such as the non-cholera vibrio species infections. 
Moreover, farming practices in agriculturally reliant countries, such as the use of pesticides in crops, can contaminate food sources. Cultural factors, such as consumption of bushmeat, outdoor cooking, and wet markets, can give rise to wildlife factors entering food. The rural cultivation of food can increase the risk of being infected by food borne bacteria. Moreover, developing economies can give rise to rapid market development by the lack of governmental support, which can reduce the attention on food processing. Overcrowding resulting from urbanization can cause crowded housing and an increased pressure in food supply. The increase on global transportation can increase the consumption of fresh food in developing countries, as they can import more food. This chart shows that many perishable food consumption increase in developing countries, especially for egg and meat. Lastly, the incongruities and loopholes in regulations, especially the conflicts between the national food safety standards versus the Codex Alimentarius, a set of standards by the FAO, can exacerbate foodborne diseases. As you can see, this chart shows that the determinants of human health and nutrition in Ethiopia are affected by many factors such as the ecosystem, markets, and housing, sanitation, then human health. Human health and nutrition can be affected by water from soil and forest, crop production, livestock productions, and housing and sanitation. How can we address foodborne illnesses? This requires a holistic approach, such as tighter regulations and standards, like the Codex Alimentarius, a set of standards outlining contaminants, pesticides, and biotechnology rules. The farm to fork strategy, which pays attention to every stage of food processing, can potentially address foodborne diseases. International cooperation between countries can greatly address foodborne diseases. For example, the InfoSan can help improve the infrastructure and emergency reliefs for developing countries during large-scale food outbreaks. Lastly, emphasis on education and training can increase the awareness of the population and help them to know more about the impact of foodborne diseases. One more year of education can reduce local infections by 2.43%. In conclusion, foodborne illnesses bring serious implications in healthcare, economy, and the environment. The developing countries suffer severely from the impacts. However, foodborne diseases can be prevented through cooperation and awareness from everybody. I would like to end this presentation with a quote. Let food be your medicine and let medicine be your food by Hippocrates. Here are the references. I would like to thank the organizers of the HLC at JHU for having me to present today. Thank you attendees for listening to my presentation and the warm appreciation from my family for supporting me all along. If you have any questions, please reach out to me via email. Thank you. Hmm.